Hello everybody, welcome to Automotive World. I'm Martin Carl, I'm the editor of Automotive World and I'll be moderating today's session. Thanks for joining us for this webinar which is on the topic of HD mapping and autonomous vehicles. Today we're going to hear from Electrobit's Michael Reichel and TomTom's Evert Scheffer who will discuss how HD map data can be paired with automated driving functions. So a little bit of background, the use of an HD horizon which combines HD map data with onboard sensors can ultimately create a safer and more efficient automated driving experience. The trick however is to ensure that ADAS and automated driving applications can access this data to enable and improve their functionalities. And this is where the ADASIS or Advanced Driver Assistance Systems Interface Specification Standard comes in. And we'll hear about this over the next hour as our panelists discuss how up-to-date HD map data can be brought into in-vehicle advanced driver assistance and autonomous driving functions. And our panelists are Michael Reichel, who is Director of Product Management Automated Driving at Electrobit, and Evert Scheffer, Regional Director of Product Management Autonomous Driving at TomTom. Tom. As ever, slides and a recording of the event will be made available afterwards and we'll send you an email to let you know how and when you can access those. Um, that's all I, you're going to hear from me now. I'm going to hand over to Michael and Evert for their presentation, at the end of which we'll have a Q&A session. So please do get your questions ready, type them into the Q&A box. Michael, Evert, over to you for how HD maps and Adasis V3 can extend the vision of automated vehicles. Great, Martin. Thanks for that introduction. So this is uh, Evert, uh, Evert Schaefer and, uh, from TomTom. I Tom. will be presenting this webinar together with uh, Michael Reichel from Electrobit, who will introduce himself uh, in a minute. Uh, I am in TomTom responsible for business development for our autonomous driving suite in Europe, which also means that I will interact with you in case you want to know more after this webinar. Yeah, my name is Michael Reichel from Electrobit. I'm responsible for product management for automated driving. This contains some um, testing equipment, what we do at Electrobit to enable the development and validation of automated driving systems, as well as building blocks that are needed for automated driving. And this session today is focusing on one of the building blocks that are needed, namely making maps available through um, for TomTom maps, Auto Stream, and Adasis V3 within the system. Ever, I think you have, are in charge. Thanks. Um, let me briefly introduce Electrobits at the beginning with one slide. So we are a company well known in the automotive industry, focusing mostly on embedded systems and embedded software that um, runs in a lot of cars out there. I guess that. Uh, in almost any car that you drive by yourself, our software is in, so Daimler, BMW, Audi, um, Toyota, Honda, and a lot of brands out there also in the US carry our own software in there. Um, we are empowering more than 100 million of vehicles with all, billions of devices in these vehicles. And we have four focus topics we're working on. One is the vehicle infrastructure, so operating systems. Um, then building blocks to connect the vehicle and get them connected to the outside world. Tools for user experience, as well as automated driving, which is our part today. Now I hand over to Evert. Exactly. So uh, a bit of words on TomTom. Tom. Uh, I think a lot of you know TomTom Tom from our consumer business in the past. Um, we actually have since 1991, uh, 27 years of map making experience, which started with that consumer business we were in. Uh, it is fair to say that our company uh, changed dramatically over time, uh, becoming a more a B2B company nowadays. Um, so if you look to how TomTom is internally organized, we have an enterprise um, uh, business unit dealing with customers like uh, Microsoft, Uber, and the likes. And we have an automotive business, and that's actually the unit, uh, the automated driving uh, unit is in. So I'm actually myself in that automotive uh, business uh, from, uh, from TomTom. If you look to everything we do, it's uh, around three core technologies, like you see here on this slide. It's around uh, maps, high accurate maps, navigation, which is also including navigation software, and real-time services uh, like uh, traffic uh, uh, services you see used in a lot of uh, production car nowadays. Uh, we are an independent company, so we are uh, fully um, um, independent uh, in the industry, uh, working with, uh, with global OEMs, uh, so in Europe, uh, in Asia, and in the US, uh, but also with uh, automotive tier one suppliers, 
and like I already told you, enterprise customers like uh, Microsoft and, and Uber. So if you look to the reason why we actually have a joint webinar today is that uh, TomTom and Electrobit uh, have a partnership in place. And that's all uh, uh, historically started in 2017, uh, where we had the initial uh, discussions about this. And we uh, both signed a partnership agreement as a starting point of that relationship. Um, in that year, we also kicked off a number of uh, multidisciplinary on-site workshops or different teams involved, not only development management teams, but also product management teams. And that was the start of different tracks for different product solutions. And that all started in 2017. Then in 2018, we did a joint press release at the uh, Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, uh, followed by uh, the first uh, joint webinars, uh, where this is actually uh, one of the series uh, since then. In 2018, we also launched a Adasis V3 reference implementation. Uh, Michael and I will address this in far more detail during this webinar. But basically, um, it started with a combination of the Adasis V3 Horizon provider based on a TomTom HD map in the so-called NDS format. And that evolved into um, a combination of the Adasis V3 Horizon uh, combined uh, with a streaming service TomTom offers, we call OuterStream. And this is a very important topic we will uh, detail again more today in the webinar. And uh, we are both proud to say that we actually won global business uh, based on that uh, joint solution. So there will be cars out there in the next coming years having uh, this joint solution on board. So if you look to uh, maps in general, uh, that's the core business again where TomTom is in, in this relationship. Um, I always like to compare maps with a, uh, being an additional sensor in uh, the system in the car with the uh, uh, advantage that a map uh, can basically look further ahead than uh, the best possible available sensor you can buy uh, off the shelf today. Um, even uh, uh, and that will work independently of uh, traffic and weather conditions. So it will always be there and provide, let's say, the same quality of information. There is a, a, a number of automated and autonomous driving features working with MAP um, uh, in the back and in the in the background, and uh, that is valid for different levels of automation. So if you look at this slide, actually all of these features use a MAP in the end as a support of the feature. Um, that is, uh, we call it ADAS maps, ADAS attributes for speed limit information, uh, which is uh, displayed here on the left side of this slide. We use curvature and slope information to control powertrains in, for instance, trucks, which helps uh, fuel saving uh, use cases. So also there, an ADAS map plays a very important role. And then last but not least, uh, if you look to uh, the autonomous driving features or the automated driving features like highway and traffic jam pilot-like uh, systems, we have decimeter accurate maps we call HD maps. And um, that is a big part of the business development uh, discussion I am currently having with the industry uh, on uh, using HD map for those kind of uh, features in the car. So to put that a bit uh, in uh, perspective, here you see the different levels of automation uh, with what kind of products we, uh, we have uh, available for that. So on the lower levels of automation, it's all about ADAS maps, um, which are, let's say, meter accurate. If you go to the higher levels of automation, we talk about HD maps, which are sub 20 centimeter accurate, so decimeter accurate. And for level two, it's a bit uh, dependent on what uh, the feature in the vehicle actually is about. Um, black and white, uh, if you need uh, precise localization in the feature, and lateral and longitudinal control based on map data and sensors. You would need an HD map. Um, if it's speed control, then we see a lot of customers using uh, our ADAS map. Um, in this slide, you also see uh, ADASIS V2 and ADASIS V3 mentioned. Uh, again, Michael uh, from Electrobit is uh, the expert in this. He will explain more about this. But what I wanted to, uh, to tell you now is that there is a very strong link between the ADAS environment and ADASIS V2 and the HD environment and ADASIS V3. So basically, you could see that as a hard split. 
So if you then look to the portfolio of TomTom, Tom, um, we have a separate product for ADAS uh, use cases, we call ADAS Map, which is kind of a navigation map enriched with um, a curvature, slope, uh, traffic sign information, speed information. Um, and on the other side, we have HD maps, which are highly accurate maps uh, for use cases, like I already told you, like a traffic jam pilot and um, uh, highway pilot uh, solutions. I think it's also important to state that for the HD map, uh, you have a base layer, a base map, which is kind of a geometry layer. But on top of that, we offer a choice between different additional layers. One of them is our so-called road DNA, road, uh, road DNA uh, science layer, which includes uh, the uh, accurate position of traffic signs, which works extremely well with cameras. But we also have layers specifically uh, tailored for other sensors, like our road DNA roadside, which goes very well with LiDAR sensors. And you can imagine that different information in the map uh, can be used for different sensor sets. So we have a level of flexibility there. This slide is around uh, coverage. I um, uh, need to state that this coverage slide is specifically about the ADAS, uh, sorry, about the HD map. Uh, for the ADAS map, we have uh, coverage which is uh, kind of on par with our navigation map. So it's uh, global, globally available on, on um, the different uh, functional road classes. At the moment for HD map, we have uh, our production maps uh, for uh, controlled access highways. Um, the reason for that is that is where we see currently the traction is for that map data. Uh, needless to say, to say, we will expand this coverage over time and also the number of road classes uh, over time when we see uh, customers using that actually in production environments. So in uh, research and uh, R&D environments, we have more than uh, we uh, cover on this slide, but this is what we have in production currently for SOPs uh, for the next coming year and years. So if you look to uh, an HD map, uh, what is very important is that uh, that map will be used for, uh, let's say, safety critical uh, solutions in the vehicle. And therefore, uh, as a map is by default a representation of the real world somewhere in the past, and that could be yesterday, it's very important for us that we have a mechanism to update that map very frequently and uh, make sure that the map is that, that 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 version of the map is the one who is uh, sent to the vehicle and therefore we looked at how to solve that in uh, the best possible way combining the advantages of online use as well as uh, offline use and uh, the result of that investigation and uh, development is a product we call TomTom AutoStream um, basically, it's the best of both worlds, we believe, uh, because it uses uh, memory in the car, um, uh, cache memory, where the relevant data you need for your drive is basically stored. And the outstream mechanism will check uh, the data which is required, will check if there is potentially a newer version available in the TomTom cloud. And if so, it will download that from the cloud. In case the map data is not yet there, it will needless to say download that new data. But if the data is already the latest and greatest, there will be no data traffic uh, unnecessarily uh, being downloaded from uh, the TomTom cloud. So again, we believe AutoStream helps a lot in, uh, in, in benefiting from both uh, online and offline advantages. Last but not least, I want to mention that this AutoStream goes with a piece of client software we provide to the industry, which is very easy to integrate in the processes in the car. And one of the examples actually uh, is the uh, interaction we have with Electrobit. Uh, we will discuss today. Uh, it is AutoStream client who is integrated with the Adasis V3 Horizon provider from Electrobit. But again, Michael will tell you more about that in the next coming slides. Yeah, thank you very much, Everett, um, for the handover. So you tease that um, this is exactly the point where we start um, using your clients, um, making the maps available in the system. And uh, our task is now, how can one convey all the information from a map within the EE system? And this task is basically not new 
Um, there are a lot of functions in the car that already use map data. And that's why um, there is a standard for this, distributing that information via a vehicle horizon. And um, well, the, the most known standard there and the de facto standard used worldwide is the one from the ADASIS forum. ADASIS stands for Advanced Driver Systems, System, uh, Systems Interface Specification. And the kickoff point for the ADASIS forum was exactly the question, how can we distribute map data through an EE system that has a lot of bandwidth limits, so the CAN standard, and um, a group of global industry suppliers, as well as OEMs, as well as map suppliers, came together and said, what well, we write down this specification to be sure that the one that sends information talks about the same um, uh, things and understands it in the same way as the ones that receive the information and are going to work with the information. So that's why there's um, that interface specification from a standard. And the good and the bad and the standard is um, good things are that um, anyone who refers to the standards, for example, in a quotation, has very easy quotations because they only need to state what is the difference or in terms of ADASIS, what are the custom profiles um, you need in your system specifically for your own purposes. All the rest has been already defined and stated, and you can refer to that system. The bad thing in standards is usually that it takes very long until the standard has been written down, agreed among all the parties, and um, becoming also a standard, and that everything is settled up in terms of the needed environment. So there need to be some pre-development tools and there need to be a, a specification anyone can read and release and so on. Good news here is that we passed this point with ADASIS already. So it was founded in 2002 um, with ADASIS V2 already in mass production, a lot of cars. And ADASIS V3, which is basically targeting the usage of HD map for higher level of automation, so L2 plus systems and above, uh, was foreseen that this is needed. In 2014, there was the kickoff for um, developing uh, ADASIS standard V3. And um, as ever told that we are up to working on, on mass production, um, uh, we are using the standard for ADASIS V3 version 3.1 already. So you see that the standards are so far that can be used in a system. Um, hold on a second. Here we are. Um, we showed you what um, functions um, can make usage of um, map data and um, refer to that there is a close linkage in between ADAS maps, so SD maps and HD maps. And the same refers to, uh, same applies to the ADASA standard. So the ADASA standard version two is um, for level zero systems, also climate control systems can make usage of it. Um, for example, turning the air condition uh, only into the air for tunnels and as soon as you pass, you get fresh air from the outside and again uh, for headlight systems as well as for systems that uh, are, have a uh, level two system, ACC combined with uh, lane keeping and make usage of what is the road ahead, uh, the sensor, uh, sensor view. Um, Adasis V2 and V3 will there exist in parallel. So in past, Adasis V2 has been established and nowadays we see more and more OEMs working towards a level two plus systems and level three systems. That's why there is a coexistence and will be a coexistence of both standards. Um, this is one reason is that it is based on both well, two different maps. And there are some other reasons I will refer to in the next slides in a comparison um, in between ADASIS V2 and V3. So the, it has two different purposes. The, the main purpose is to distribute map data um, within the system. 
What we, Adasus V2 is distributing these map data along the CAN bus, while Adasus V3 took into account that there um, are new connections coming in the EE system that has a higher bandwidth available, so Ethernet, TCP IP connection in between the provider and the reconstructors. And um, therefore, what we can convey through Adasus V3 has uh, not to stick to the limitations of the CAN bus. Also, the communication scheme changes, at least the possibilities of the communication scheme. And Adasus V2, you have one provider that is broadcasting the information towards end clients in the system. At Adasus V3, there's a publish subscribe principle, and you have multiple providers possible. Well, how can this be? So there's one master provider that um, distributes the information of a map as a skeleton. Um, so that comes via the Tonto map in this case, out of stream, and um, then this is being uh, distributed in a system. And a camera, for example, can use that, um, that already provided um, tree and look for, for example, the profile of traffic lights and can state as additional provider the actual status of the traffic light. So can repost more information using the Adasus V3 um, that anyone else in the system can make usage of this as well. It also supports multiple independent trees, um, while Adasus V2 uh, has only single tree support. With higher bandwidth, there is also um, no longer really a limitation in the, in the most probable path lengths or in a path length that can be distributed. The 43,000 kilometers are a theoretical uh, value there because, of course, you will not distribute um, several times around the world and e-horizon, but if you have a resolution of one centimeter, that is um, the maximum length you can store there, but you can also um, state side trees or use several independent trees. I think the rest of elements um, you've already read by yourself or you're faster than I can talk. These slides are being distributed at the end, so you do not need to write down or everything else. You can also um, deep dive this information after the webinar, of course. What is actually TomTom Tom and Electrobits jointly working on? So um, we heard about maps that can be streamed. We heard about ADAS and HD maps and the differences in these. We heard about Adasus V2 and V3. And so on this slide, we um, compiled this information into a little bit more digestible format, what we are up to and what we are not up to, uh, what you can see there. On the left-hand side, um, it is um, uh, ordered by connectivity, starting with onboard maps that are in their um, uh, built-in into a vehicle need to be updated either by the, the customer or in the garage for the classical way of distribute maps in the system. Um, then onboard maps with some connected services where um, more dynamic data is being distributed within the system. And on top you have the on-demand map download where um, um, intelligent client make usage of both worlds basically storing some parts onboard that are used more frequently and the other parts are being downloaded on the fly, as well as being able to download um, newer map information that uh, are available on the server. On the bottom line, you see the two different maps, um, one the ADAS map, um, which is uh, used there in the NDS format and the HD map. And, um, Bringing these two parts together, you can see that for Adasus V2, we are working together with TomTom to make an Adasus V2 stream available based on onboard maps with connected services. For the Adasus V3, um, we are using the TomTom HD maps as well as AutoStream, the client, and um, building from this the Adasus V3 stream in the system. One question I get. Uh, being asked or we get being asked on a regular basis um, how does it look on the system. 
So we take a little bit uh, look under the under hood there. So for ADAS functions where we are referring to ADAS as V2, it is that static NDS map of an NDS API um, where we build our EB um, horizon provider upon and the information is being broadcasted and reconstructed in every single ECU by also a piece of software that we can offer there um, to ensure that the provider and the reconstructor are really um, understanding each other. On the right hand side, how does it look like for a DAS V3? So there's uh, the map is being um, hosted on the cloud with the newest map available. There's the TomTom Auto Stream client in the car as embedded software. We make usage there of the embedded API and build up on our EB Horizon provider for our DAS V3. Distribute the, the information is being distributed via Ethernet in the in the system, and we also um, can provide the reconstructor parts and the single ECUs making usage of the DAS V3. Another question is um, what profiles are available. So we started our collaboration ship um, two years ago, and we are happy to announce that the profiles you can read on this page as well as on the next page are already available or will be made available um, very soon. And I think if you read through the elements that are marked there, um, you can basically start developing your level two, level two plus system, level three system that you're up to um, already now. So it's containing curvature, slopes, road geometry, lane model, linear objects, lane geometry, lane connectivity, number of lanes, lane width, location objects. Um, uh, you, you will get these slides later on, so you can also um, read them through and distribute them maybe within your company if uh, you want to share this information. I will go to the next slide. Um, and there are even more elements that are available right now. So speed limits, extended speed limits, complex intersections, um, link identifiers, some traffic signs. And the other parts that you can read through there will be made available um, in 2020. There's that word written, um, the eval kit. And um, the eval kit is referring to a piece of software and hardware we as Electrobit put together. Um, basically, we put into that um, Raspberry Pi that you can see there our mass production provider and reconstructor, so the one that um, takes the map and um, translate it into an adult stream, as well as the one that takes the adult stream and make it available for the functions. Um, and we put in there adult V2 and V3. So all that you have seen there before with a pre-compiled and built in NDS map, as well as with an OTA client to um, download the most interesting tiles on the fly is on that Raspberry Pi. And I'm very happy to say that in this Raspberry Pi that it's not a um, park software or something else we do next to our mass production software. This is our mass production software wrap for you that you can also already make usage and start working with um, map data. This AvalCAD is also coming with a web application that uh, means that you can use any smartphone, tablet, laptop, anything that has wireless connection can um, um, go to the login page and um, do all the configurations that are being needed that you can place this on your table or within a car and that it start, can start working right away. Um, this is one part. The other part is that we also put some different modes in there um, you can use it in a live mode, so connect it to a GPS, put it into a car, uh, drive around, and it will um, return and send Adazo V2 or V3 messages out. You can also place it um, next to your desktop and use um, recorded files, and you can also do a route simulation um, of a simulated car running from A to B um, and providing the Adazo stream as if 
uh, you would uh, drive. So since we wrapped our mass production software in there, I would also use um, one of the last elements um, in this webinar to tell you what history we have there. So we do the horizon um, for the Volkswagen um, since 2012 to today. We have another premium OEM that is widely using the Adasus uh, format with um, almost all cars, all platforms. Um, we are the, um, the provider of the software for Adasus um, with more than 120 deliveries done so far in mass production. I'm also happy to say that we as Electrobit have been awarded as the reference implementation company that does the first Adasus V3 provider and reconstructor um, implementation. So the thing that you get for Adasus V3 is making uh, being uh, made available through Electrobits and here in collaboration with TomTom Tom, um, that you can start work. DSpace also took what we did into the Raspberry Pi um, and uh, wrapped it into a Simulink block so that you can start with the Horizon Reconstructor block set um, um, using, if you're using Simulink and, and MATLAB as a tool for your own function development, you're ready to start also using the Adasus format and receiving the information from, uh, from the map via Adasus and can directly work um, using a, uh, a block set there. And 2019, that's where we have um, the webinar today announced that the first HD Horizon for automated driving based on Adasus V3 is ready um, to be shipped to our customers. That's where I hand over to Everett. I think you have similar good news. Indeed. So yeah, thanks for uh, providing that overview from the Electrobit side. So for TomTom, Tom, um, uh, uh, if you look back in the last recent years since 2012, uh, we started actually with launching uh, global solutions together with OEMs for our ADAS map. Um, so like I told you, functions based on the gradient and curvature uh, and traffic sign information in our maps. Um, that mainly tailors around uh, around uh, personal cars. Then um, also in 2012, uh, we launched with uh, some truck manufacturers, uh, predictive powertrain solutions based on TomTom -Tom ADAS maps. And uh, I was personally very much impressed by uh, what they can do with map data combined with their uh, powertrain control because you uh, you see uh, fuel savings up to 5% based on that map data, which is for the truck world uh, really an interesting use case. Um, then we are providing solutions behind intelligent speed assist and your end cap. So basically having features like this in the car will, will provide additional points for the Euro end cap um, uh, uh, system. And I think it's also important to state that, as you likely know, uh, there is a med uh, mandatory um, uh, requirement from the European government uh, starting 2022 to have a, a form of intelligent speed assist in uh, vehicles. And like uh, we explained, uh, an ADAS map can play a very important role in there because it would allow to uh, also give you good quality information in heavy traffic and bad weather um, situations where potentially cameras would not be optimal by itself alone. Then in the last recent years, uh, we are working more and more on predictive uh, cruise control and uh, L2 solutions with our map data. And uh, well, we kind of repeat ourselves. I think I've uh, already mentioned that we see the first real projects uh, going on based on HD map as well. And uh, yeah, that's uh, an important uh, step uh, in the industry uh, where we are happy we are part of together with, uh, with Electrobit. So as a conclusion, before going into answering your questions, um, to summarize, uh, TomTom and Electrobit together provides you a combination of an ADAS map together with an ADASIS V2 Horizon. So that's basically the, the package you get can get from uh, the partnership from both of us, uh, which again plays in the uh, ADAS uh, world. Uh, but also we have based on HD map data and ADASIS V3 Horizon, 
available and like uh, Michael already mentioned that is uh, in um, evaluation uh, uh, environments but also in uh, in production yeah and, um, we also showed you that there is a convenient way to start your own applications upon using a dozens v3 horizon data and I'm happy to see any questions already on some questions about the able kit we will come to this very soon and um, you can contact us either one of us to obtain the demo kits um, as well as to get access to TomTom Tom HD map evaluation data um, hope we could answer a lot of questions and we will answer a lot of questions and that fits to your needs what you're up to work for yourself for driving functions or other functions that needs uh, to make usage of a map. And I hope we can see you at the uh, Frankfurt Motor Show. Everett will explain a little bit around and uh, at the Motor Show, one of the booths where you can see Electrobit software is at Tonto. Yeah, so the same goes for me. If you want to reach out directly, our email addresses are on this slide. And um, needless to say, we can also be found on LinkedIn, for instance, uh, if you want to connect. And uh, TomTom actually has a booth at the uh, Frankfurt Motor Show, which is in Hall 8. And it's mentioned here, booth T39, where we not only show, of course, the uh, solutions we have with Electrobit, but there is uh, far more interesting stuff to see there. So we would be happy to have you over and have a dialogue with you. Having said that, from my point of view and from Michael's point of view, thanks a lot for the attention until now. I think this is the moment where we head back to Martin for the Q&A part of this webinar. Indeed it is. Thank you, Everett. Thank you, Michael, for sharing that information with us. We do have a Q&A opportunity now, so if anybody would like to ask a question, please type it into the Q&A box on your screen and I'll put as many relevant questions as possible to our speakers and we've had a number of questions already so I'm going to get this underway I will try and keep this into sort of uh, grouped order so that we don't have repetition or jumping backwards and forwards from topics but there are so many questions already we'll see what happens what can you start with this what is the coverage of the TomTom -Tom ADAS map please yeah, that's a, that's a global coverage actually. So basically, we would say US and the full of Europe, um, uh, parts of Asia where we have, let's say, uh, map making possibilities. Um, so it's a, actually a global solution we have in place there. I think it's good to mention that for China, it's a bit of a exceptional situation because in China, we are not allowed to make our own maps. Uh, that's due to uh, licenses for the Chinese uh, uh, government. And there we work with partnerships, but uh, basically we can offer uh, global solutions. Right. Okay. Thank you. And since this was an EB TomTom -Tom, uh, webinar, this is a perfect question. What is the joint EB TomTom -Tom offering for standalone Adasis version two? So, the standalone offering for Adasis v2, we uh, refers on a built-in uh, map, a standalone map there. And it's made software as well as the map coming together that it can be put on an ECU that is uh, distributing the information into the system via Adasis V2. So um, for a standalone especially, um, it is built in a way that it doesn't need a navigation system. Um, so for passenger cars, it might not be that luring, but for a lot of the user of like, trucks and um, uh, Fuse systems, for example, these standalone software building block um, might be luring. Thank you. Um, is Adasis, does Adasis only describe the map interfaces or does it also have something to do with other V2X services? Adasis is describing the interface in between the provider so that knows the map and is distributing this within the EE system. Um, it is not thought as a interface for bringing in other V2X service data. For V3, I think the step towards uh, bringing in more V2X service data is not that far because in V3 there are also profiles you can easily add by yourself as custom profiles. And it's also um, 
thought in a way that there can be additional suppliers, additional um, data suppliers within the system. And I think that the question I cannot really answer and yes or no, has it been thought through in the standardization from the beginning? No. Is it possible to do this in Adasis V3? Yes. All right, thanks. You talked about uh, collaboration on maps, so there's a couple of questions here. Um, somebody said, many companies are collaborating with other leading map developers and software providers. Uh, how important is it for you that the collaboration strategy is, uh, how important is the collaboration strategy to develop HD maps? Well, I think what is important, uh, and I mentioned this in my uh, explanation, is an HD map, uh, of course, has value when it is, uh, let's say, up to date. And there, uh, I think you see a mechanism in the market to use uh, not only the data from survey vehicle fleets from uh, map providers, but also use the data from uh, vehicles, uh, some production vehicles. Uh, I have to say that comes with a few elements like uh, volume and quality. Uh, so I think the market is kind of settling uh, uh, still on that. So I think the golden egg is not yet uh, there. Uh, but but I believe that you will see more and more corporations in that field in the industry uh, to get to the right volumes and the right quality to make sure that HD map providers will be able to provide a uh, very accurate and up-to-date map over time. Okay, well, we have had the question, how do you keep those maps up to date? Yeah, so that's, uh, that's half in my answer. I, I think it's at the moment a combination of uh, two very important sources. I think for the time being, uh, our own fleet data still uh, plays a very important role uh, to make uh, updates in the map. Uh, but you can imagine that uh, when the technology emerges and the more uh, cars out there will have sophisticated localization uh, in the vehicle itself, that sensor data can be also used more and more to at least understand where there is a change, right? So for change detection. Um, it will take a bit of time to mature the data from the car to really use it for uh, map updates, we believe. But that is something we potent which potentially can go fast. Uh, but currently, I would say both vehicle fleet as well as sensor derived observations from vehicle uh, are both equally important. And here's an interesting spin on the uh, HD map. Um, just like conventional mappings, our questioner says, will HD maps uh, or the HD map market turn into a monopoly driven market? That's uh, that's something I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I think there is always, uh, my personal view would be there is always space for multiple players uh, in a market like this. Um, also knowing that uh, uh, yeah, there is a convic conviction in the industry that this uh, use case will be, uh, let's say, uh, the different levels of automation will be growing uh, dramatically over the next coming, let's say, five to ten years. And I believe there is space for multiple vendors out there. Um, but I think that's a very long dialogue we will not be able to solve here. But I don't necessarily see that that's, that, that leads to a monopoly uh, position, no. And let's stay with HD maps for a little bit longer. What are the benefits of crowdsourcing for the development of HD maps? Yeah, I hinted towards, I believe, in the answers I gave. I think, in theory, it's a very interesting concept, uh, crowdsourcing. However, it comes with uh, a quality and volume. Um, and I think uh, if you look to the equipment which is currently used to create a map, it's extremely high and, and high, highly expensive equipment, right? We talk about uh, high-end uh, uh, LIDARs combined with, uh, with all kinds of other sensors in survey vehicles to create the map. Um, so I believe that create, creating a, a good quality, high resolution, very accurate HD map from uh, production uh, grade sensors uh, is, is not yet there at the moment. Uh, however, um, like I or also stated, uh, there is value in using additional uh, sensor derived observations from production cars out there to um, uh, to feed back into the to, to, into the map making process, 
so so I don't think that um, there will be a replacement, but I do think it adds value. Okay, we've talked a little bit about global. Um, we've had a very specific question about India, which uh, is as follows. India lags behind by quite a margin compared to other countries when it comes to the development of autonomous vehicle technology. What do you think the future holds for India in terms of uh, autonomous driving and HD map technology? Yeah, maybe I, I spend a few words on that. And uh, Michael, if you uh, will uh, want to compute, contribute from the Lekabit side as well, that, that that's of course uh, also good. Um, I, I explained our a, a production HD map coverage we have at the moment and told you that we are kind of following the state of the technology basically there. Uh, for India, um, you likely know that the traffic uh, situation in India is very different from let's say controlled access highways in the US and in Europe. So I think there is a few technical challenges to uh, overcome first uh, before it makes sense for map providers to create an HD map uh, for use cases in India. So I think the one goes a bit hand in hand with the other. Uh, as soon as uh, some of the, 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 the planning uh, challenges uh, are overcome by technologies, uh, by tiers and OEMs in the market, then of course map making vendors will be there uh, to, uh, to make HD map for, uh, for that area as well, including TomTom. Well, I can add some parts here. Um, so on the one hand, I also experienced India as a very diverse country. So on some parts of India, are, as you described, Everett, some parts of India look very likely like Europe or the US in terms of how, they, how the, uh, uh, the streets are structured. I know from some Indian companies that they have a plan to go for automated driving, but it's a long run story. It's not like uh, competing with all the others in the world that wants to make it happen within the next years. It's more that we are talking about the decade um, to make this happen. This is several reasons. I think one of the reasons is um, the market is also different there. So um, Europe and the US and as well as some countries in Asia, the people are either driving by themselves or want to be driven by the car. For the Indian market, I know that a lot of people are being driven by other drivers. And so um, the necessity for an automated driving system is not that deep as it is in other countries. That these are my two cents I can answer there. I would hope that we see automated driving also in India. Okay, we had a, a question about, um, we'll stay with HD mapping for a little bit longer. TomTom's HD map deals with uh, start of production in 2020. Are the HD lane models used in OEM Precision absolute localization apps or also landmark and localization assets? Yeah, actually, uh, I think we formally announced we we're working on a number of uh, deals out there. So, it, uh, and I, of course, I cannot reveal the, which deal is is using what, but I can state that uh, in some of the deals we are actually using geometry uh, only, and in some of the deals, um, uh, traffic sign location, uh, we call that road DNA signs in TomTom, -Tom is used for uh, additional localization features for that product. So it's both, um, but what you see is that the OEM in the end decides on uh, what they want to use and uh, what uh, information goes with which uh, sensor set. And on the point of traffic sign recognition, do you use, somebody has asked here, your traffic sign recognition feature or, uh, sorry, do you use in your traffic sign recognition feature already mapped data or also any instant visual recognition? So let, I'm, I'm not sure if I get that question fully, but let me uh, try to explain um, uh, some important things you need to know about how we handle this in our map making processes. So first of all, in ADAS map, so the non-HD part, uh, traffic sign information plays a very important role, right? Speed limit information, stop sign information, yield information, uh, so basically traffic um, rules. 
In HDMAP, it is really about the location of the traffic sign. So there, the content of the traffic sign itself doesn't play a important role. Though what we do include in our HD map is uh, information about how that uh, traffic sign looks like. So is it a red sign with a, is the, uh, the dominant color of that uh, traffic sign, for instance, red with a little of white, or is it uh, a, a different color set, as well as the shape. And we do that for the camera perception. So uh, you can imagine if that information is in our HD map. Your camera looks like, uh, at the environment. Uh, it will be easier for the perception uh, uh, algorithms in the car to understand what it is looking at, which becomes even more important when the weather conditions are not optimal. Uh, you, can in, you can imagine that in heavy rain situations, this helps more. Uh, this is more important, I wanted to say, than in uh, nice uh, California sunlight. Uh, but that is basically important to understand, and I hope by that additional information I answered this question. If not, then uh, maybe I need a bit more explanation about uh, the question itself. Maybe this question was also a little bit referred to what I explained at multiple providers, or someone knows the offering of the Electrobit quite well, that we are also active in the field of um, traffic sign recognition. So maybe this question goes there, let me answer from my side. Um, so currently, it's, it's a pretty straightforward, and if I talk about currently, this is what we um, are bringing up into mass production. There is a map, and um, the map is being made available through Adasus V2 or V3, and a traffic sign recognition is a pure receiver and consumer of this information. Technically possible, and from the standard already foreseen, is that um, the traffic sign recognition can also resend or distribute their information through Adasus V3, but this is not what we are currently um, working on. Maybe the question was going into this direction. All right, thanks very much. Um, on the topic of Adasis, can you please uh, take on this question, which has come in, which major automakers participate in the Adasis initiative? Yeah, that, and perhaps uh, in answering that, you could talk a little bit more about how the ADASIS initiative uh, came together and what it aims to do, maybe um, growth in the future and so on as well. Um, yeah, l let me first answer the, the question on what um, uh, OEMs are working there together. I'm reading the web page, so there's ADASIS.org and there the, the members are officially listed. It's Daimler, Honda, Hyundai Motor Group, Jaguar Land Rover, Renault and, and Nissan, so also the Alliance as well, Toyota, Volkswagen, Volvo, Opel, and Ford. Um, basically spinning that idea of Adasis around the world and to a lot of different OEMs and a lot of different OEMs that have several independent collaborations to work towards higher level of autonomy as well. Um, it, Contains also navigation system manufacturers. Um, I read just a few Alpine, Harman, Phil Enough, Panasonic, Noisoft, and a lot of others, as well as uh, manufacturers of systems Bosch, Continental, Denso, Valeo, Mazda, EPO, Huawei, Aptiv, ZF, Electrobit, as well as uh, map and data providers. And uh, as you can see, with this broad setup and who is actively participating in that Adasis forum and who is making usage of that Adasis forum, that um, the companies um, came together in order to also easily sell their parts or to be sure that what they are working on, if they're using the map data, does not um, come with another specification at every OEM they go to and every system they want to sell. So for them, it's an easiness to build upon their products, as we also do. Um, for the map providers, it's also an easiness that they know what is the target specification the data need to fit in. And um, that's the scope of the Adasis Forum. I hope I answered uh, both questions. If not, then please um, rephrase the second one. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Um, from there, let's talk a little bit about security. And somebody would like to know how the security of HD maps is ensured, both on the server side and in the car. 
Yeah, this is uh, also a very important topic, of course, if you look to, to how map data is used in uh, safety critical functions. So this for also hinges to uh, uh, discussions in this industry about uh, the, the ASL level of the function itself. Um, I have to state that map data itself cannot be categorized in an ASL uh, functional safety uh, way. So we have different means in, in doing that. Um, we have um, a mechanism in place, but also let's say check some mechanisms in place to verify uh, that the data we intended to send is basically also the data which ends up in the vehicle and is not corrupted in some way uh, on, on the way down. Um, that is a very important part. Uh, and then, of course, overall uh, data security and server security, et cetera, also plays a big role. Uh, but we are actually touching up all of that and also working together with Electrobit uh, for the, let's say, in-car uh, functional safety requirements. Um, um, that, that is an important part of the work we are doing. All right, thank you. Yeah. From security, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, also from Electrobit. So um, I think we are known in the um, any other mode of industry for our embedded systems and especially for our operating systems. So that means that if it comes to safety, so meaning um, ensuring any harm on persons are being done by a machine uh, and referring to the ASL levels that we, we know what we are doing and uh, we know what it needs to be done um, technical wise as well as process wise to ensure safety. If it comes to security, that means preventing the automated, uh, preventing the machines against humans. So the other way around is safety. And um, that's also where we have um, our experiences. And, and as Everett said, that um, both are coming together using um, latest operating systems where security and safety is built in, as well as mechanisms to ensure both in our joint architecture. All right, thanks very much. Um, final question then, and let's go from security to safety. And you discussed in one of your later slides, Euro NCAP. Could you just elaborate a little bit on the work you're doing with Euro NCAP and how that relates to um, what we've been talking about today? Sure, so I think it's mainly our customers who are working with Euro NCAP uh, to get their vehicles uh, approbated okay. and uh, getting rated. Um, but um, in Euro NCAP, uh, uh, actually speed limit information at the moment uh, provides a way to get a higher rating. So if you have in the vehicle a way to display the speed limit in the cluster, uh, my understanding is that that actually provides additional, let's say, stars or points in the NCAP uh, regulation. Um, we see by also, again, governmental um, decisions in Europe that this will be extended in the next coming year, so in 2022. Um, there is uh, uh, intelligent speed assist functionality uh, as a mandatory uh, f technology. Uh, the OEMs out there can decide uh, how to do that. Uh, needless to say, uh, uh, what we try to explain here is that maps uh, uh, bring a, a lot of benefits if, if you would also use a map in that, in that feature. Um, so it becomes from an advantage in the NCAP regulations to basically a, a mandatory requirement. Um, in the end, all, it's all about uh, safety of the driver, right? Um, uh, I believe there's proof points that when this information is made available to the drivers, uh, there's less uh, potentially unattended, uh, unattended speeding, and therefore uh, yeah, it's safer, right? So uh, it's all around uh, around safety in that sense. Okay. Well, with that, I think we have uh, reached the end of our hour together. Thank you very much for sharing all the information you did. Thank you for taking all of those questions. Thank you, of course, to Electrobit and TomTom Tom for making today possible, and most of all, to our audience for dialing in. I mentioned at the start, but I'll repeat now, we will be sending an email with a link to a downloaded, downloadable version of the slides and also an on-demand recording of the webinar itself, so you can watch that at your leisure. With that, I'd like to draw today to a close. Thank you very much, and we'll see you at the next Automotive World webinar. Goodbye.